And joining us now in studio is David Lepofsky. David is the chair of a group called the Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act Alliance. And we're happy to have you back in that chair, Mr. Lepofsky. Great to be here again. Just before we sort of bring things up to date with what you're hoping for in this provincial election campaign, I'd like to start with some background on the legislation that's in place that requires a fully accessible Ontario by the year 2025. Give us the background on that. Everybody watching this show right now either has a disability now or someone near or dear to them does or will get a disability if they live long enough because age is the most common cause of disability. Over a million and a half of us now have disabilities and we face too many barriers, whether the disability is a, a, a sensory one, I'm blind, or a physical disability, being in a wheelchair, or a, an intellectual or learning disability or mental health issue. We don't want to have to sue to tackle the barriers we face every day one at a time. I had to fight the Toronto Transit Commission to get them to announce the simple accommodation like announcing subway stops took years of human rights litigation. And even when I won it, I then had to fight them to get them to announce subway bus stops so we blind folks could know what stop we're at. We, would we wanted legislation that would systematically put in place a, a, a regime to ensure that over time, barriers we face would be torn down and new barriers wouldn't be created uh, in the future. And once upon a time, all the parties did agree to do this, right? Back in May of 2005, the McGuinty government, to their credit, brought in a law, and to the parties, the credit of the two opposition parties, they all voted for it unanimously and applauded it with a standing ovation. Okay, speaking of voting, we're going to vote pretty soon, October 6th. What has been done this time round to make sure that the voting booth is as accessible as possible? We have fought really hard for years to get an accessible election for voters with disabilities because in the past we've never been able to be sure in advance whether our polling station would be accessible and blind people like me could never independently mark our ballot in private and verify our choice. We've got partial victory in new legislation we fought for last year to require all polling stations to be accessible. We hope Elections Ontario does a better job of that than they have in the past. We've also got one accessible voting machine where I can put on headphones and vote without anybody helping me per riding and in some cases two per riding. It's a step forward, but we only have 144 accessible voting machines in all of Ontario. In the city of Chicago, there's 2,500 accessible voting machines, and that's just for three, three million folks in one city. Would you want a Braille ballot? Don't need a Braille ballot. We actually would prefer to have telephone and internet voting for uh, people without disabilities and people with disabilities. Uh, that would enable us to vote uh, conveniently, accessibly, safely, and uh, avoid the inconvenience of going to a polling station. It would be better for everybody. Okay, we're not doing well compared to Chicago, but how about compared to other provinces in Canada? I think everybody is slowly moving on this. We're making some progress, but for example, the city of Coburg here in Ontario has had uh, internet and telephone voting in the 2006 and 2010 municipal elections. So Ontario is lagging behind Coburg. <laughs> David, you have been, uh, because you've been a guest in the studio many times and told us so, you've been a champion for the rights of the disabled for a very long time. And I want to know, for this upcoming election, the one we're in right now, what are the key new requests that you've got on the table? We're a nonpartisan coalition. We don't, we're not there to tell people who to vote for or to support any party or oppose any party. What we do, as we've done in five past elections, or four past elections, is we ask all the parties to make commitments on, on an agenda that we think is affordable but doable to ensure that, for one thing, we don't lose any of the gains we've made under uh, the, the Disabilities Act of, of 2005, and to make sure the government moves us forward towards full accessibility, gets us on schedule uh, as we need to be. Uh, so we made very specific proposals to all the parties. To the credit of the Liberals and the NDP and the Greens, they each wrote us with very specific commitments. Not everything we asked for, but they at least committed they wouldn't cut gains, uh, we've made in legislation and regulation and that they would take some of the specific actions we've said to make move us forward. Unfortunately, there's one party that's refused to make any commitments whatsoever and that is the Progressive Conservative Party. Do you know why? Uh, the best person to ask of that is uh, Mr. Hudak. They've said that they'll meet with us and talk with us if elected, but they haven't committed to any action. And, and we're very concerned that the gains we've fought so hard for over the past years and won are now at risk because, uh, for example, uh, Mr. Hudak is, uh, according to the Toronto Star, uh, committed to cut at least 30% of the regulations on the books in Ontario. We want to make sure that the accessibility regulations we've won over the past years, uh, which are quite helpful, uh, aren't on that chopping block. Mr. Hudak will not commit 
uh, that he'll hold off cutting gains we've made. Our gains are at risk. Mr. Hudak may be the premier after October 6th. He's in first place in the polls right now. If he wins, how are you going to work with him? We will work with any party, as we have um, uh, uh, in the past. But our aim during the election is to campaign right now to get Mr. Hudak to do what, what John Tory did in, in 2007, what Mike Harris did in 1995, which is to commit to specific action to, uh, to move us forward towards accessibility, to do what all the other leaders uh, have committed in this election, to promise not to cut gains uh, in the case of what the other parties have committed now, and instead to commit to specific action uh, for progress. I appreciate you're nonpartisan. You don't want to endorse any of the other parties. I get that. But, but you have had your letters responded to by the three other mainline parties, in which case can you, give us, um, can you give us a sense about who's got the most specific proposals that you like? Well, what's actually interesting is if you look, and they're all on our website at aodaalliance.org, a comparison of them, they're all there. Uh, I'll ask for the other parties, not the PCs. They're all somewhat similar. Some offer us more in one area. Uh, others offer us more in another area. But there aren't dramatic differences. Um, and whoever's elected next, we will sit down with the, uh, the next government and put our entire agenda for change uh, in front of them and see if we can uh, make some progress. But the election is our opportunity to try to um, have our voice heard. And so we are actually urging uh, folks around the province to, to, to urge Mr. Hudak to actually make the commitments we're seeking. Promise that uh, the rights of people with disabilities are not on the chopping block. I don't have to tell you, we're running a $15 billion deficit in the province right now. And you've heard this, you know, you've heard this story before that um, Every time there's something that you want, people say there's a deficit and we can't do it. Uh, but this time it's a really big one. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you are going to be hearing, regardless of who wins the next election, from all of the parties that, you know what, David, we hear you, but we can't afford to do this right now. How legitimate a response is that to what you want? Uh, not at all, and for three reasons. First, our specific proposals are quite affordable. We're not asking for the sun, moon, and stars. Second, the Martin Prosperity Institute uh, uh, has itself uh, done a, a study uh, a couple of years ago, and it showed that doing accessibility is a net economic boon for Ontario. It provides a, a, more, uh, a better, broader workforce of people with disabilities to go uh, help make companies more profitable, a broader customer base, more tourists from abroad coming uh, to us uh, to spend their money here, and so on. So we lose when we're inaccessible economically. We gain when we're more accessible. But the third thing is that everything that we want people to do is already required under the Human Rights Code and the Charter of Rights. We just don't want people to have to go through what I went through, which is lawsuit after lawsuit uh, against the Toronto Transit Commission, just to get something as simple as calling our bus stops. Let me just give you a couple examples of the things that the other parties uh, have been asked to commit to but, um, and, and have agreed to in some form or other, but Mr. Hudak, we, we, well, Mr. Hudak won't. We've asked the, the next government to commit that they will not use our money to create new barriers against us. Uh, and the other parties in one form or other have made commitments to that effect. Just to tell me what that means. Use your money to Use make our tax barriers? money. The government, when they give out money for infrastructure projects or capital projects or new technology um, or when they procure goods and services, only use it on projects that will be accessible. Don't make things worse uh, with public money. The other parties, one way or other, have made some commitments in that regard. The, uh, the PCs haven't. That doesn't cost us a dime. And what it does is it prevents you, uh, uh, things getting worse uh, through public spending. Uh, we've asked the, uh, the parties to look at the way the Ontario government delivers accessibility. Right now it's split among all over the, the public service. It's in silos. It isn't as coordinated as it could be. We've asked them to reorganize things so it's more efficiently dealt with. Other parties have agreed to various measures to that end. PCs won't. This is not big cost items. These are actually uh, low cost, no cost, or efficiencies. Um, we've asked the... Uh, the parties, um, uh, try this one, just to, to review legislation to make sure it doesn't have any accessibility barriers in it. The McGuinty government's been doing that. Uh, we'd like to, it sped up. They've agreed that they're going to keep going. The other parties have agreed to it. Mr. Hudak won't commit to it in 2011, even though John Tory, his predecessor, did commit to it in 2007. Okay, I hear, I hear you saying you're nonpartisan, but on the other hand, you sound like you are really PO'd because you're not getting anywhere with the Tories. Is that fair to say? It's fair to say that in every election, when one party is lagging behind the other, we go to the public with it. In, 19, in 2007, uh, we were critical of the McGuinty government because we thought they weren't giving enough on the Human Rights Code reform uh, agenda. Uh, in 1995, we were very critical of the NDP because under Bob Ray, they weren't committing to any accessibility legislation at all. This year, after we surveyed the parties, the one that's come up wanting is the PCs. And our aim is not to tell people how to vote. 
or to, uh, but our aim is to urge Mr. Uh, Hudak, while the time is still available, to, to now reconsider his commit position and to uh, make the commitments uh, that we're seeking. Okay, a couple of more things in the time we've got left here. The NDP, the Greens, and the Liberals have all mentioned, quote unquote, restructuring government to promote accessibility in their responses to you. Can you give us kind of one idea of how that would work? Sure. One of the problems that we have in the Ontario government right now is that well, one hand doesn't know what the other hand is doing uh, uh, in terms of accessibility. There's no one in charge. There's no one person with lead responsibility. Isn't there a minister for uh, dis not, disabilities? No, no. There's one minister responsible for administering the Disabilities Act. There's another minister responsible for administering government services. Uh, uh, it's split up all over the place. There's, and so we would like to see that all. Work. So a premier can turn to one person in charge and say, Here's my agenda, make sure it happens. So you don't have to chase your tail trying to figure out who's, uh, who's on first. That's not a big cost item. That's not a small cost item. That's a cost saver. Okay, let me give you an opportunity. And normally, I, I should say, um, when we do this program, we've got information scrolling across the bottom or we've got information coming up along the sides that people can see. If they want more information, they go to such and such a website. Obviously, uh, we're talking about people with disabilities and you are visually uh, handicapped, so that's not going to be very helpful. So we want to give you this opportunity to, to say out loud so people can hear where they might go for more information on some of this. Want to learn more about this? We have a website. It's aodaalliance.org. And you can follow us on Twitter. Just go to David Lepofsky, at David Lepofsky. And we'd be delighted if you'd follow us and, and spread the word. We'd like people to urge uh, the PCs to make these commitments so that this will become a complete... Uh, so that all the parties are, are on side, no matter who forms the next government. And let me ask you one last thing. Uh, through the combination of the act that we talked about off the top, your work, and the fact that we have had for the last several years a lieutenant governor in Ontario who is physically handicapped, do you think you've made progress on these issues? I think that we are far ahead of where we would have been um, if uh, we didn't have this Disability Act. On the other hand, we are still far behind the United States, and the government's own independent review of how the Disability Act has been implemented shows that they, uh, we need to speed things up to reach full accessibility by 2025. So there's good news. The government just passed some really good uh, accessibility regulations, not as good as we'd like them to be, but they put them on the books last spring. We want to make sure we don't lose them this fall because as they're phased in uh, over the timelines they establish, or hopefully even quicker, we will see the barriers that we're facing in a number of important areas uh, uh, disappearing and, and new ones avoided. Uh, where possible. David, as always, it's good of you to join us at TVO. Thanks so much for coming in. Thanks so much for having me on.